What does it take to heal from narcissistic abuse? I've been doing this for about nine years and uh, I've personally worked with hundreds of clients and I've done courses and seminars for thousands of clients from all over the world. Plus, during that time, I regret to inform you, I've been through two narcissistically abusive relationships. I don't think it's an easy thing to heal from. I think it's actually quite difficult to heal from. And I think that we should, whether as clients or as therapists and coaches, moderate our expectations accordingly so that, you know, if you know that it's going to be really, really difficult up front, you won't be disappointed when after two or three months of work, it didn't just magically go away. I think there has to be an assumption that narcissistic abuse represents a kind of infection of the target and that it's an infection via entrainment and conditioning that takes place with close contact over time. The viral load that's delivered to the target is worse dependent on the amount and the intimacy of contact that's been delivered. Because it occurs through a kind of entrainment or conditioning by a contact with the narcissist, one of the conditions before we can even talk about healing from narcissistic abuse, recovering from narcissistic abuse, is minimizing contact as much as possible with the source of that infection. And then accepting that because there are parts of ourselves that get infected via the narcissistic abuse, we're going to have to consider the ways in which certain parts of us are irretrievable and will have to be recreated. So when answering the question, how do we heal from narcissistic abuse? It's quite a challenge to avoid mystical, religious sort of language and examples or, or using metaphors and allegories from sci-fi and fantasy movies and horror movies because that's the archetypal realm in which all of this takes place. What does it take to heal from narcissistic abuse? Before you can even consider that, you have to diminish contact. If you can eradicate contact, eradicate it, but do, at least diminish it. Does that do it? No, no, that's not even the first step. That's just you creating an environment in which healing could take place, but it's not even the first step. I think the first step is probably acknowledging that you have been infected and that this has affected you in ways that you couldn't have predicted before. That a part of your mind, a part of your personality, a part of your being is now colonized. I think that's probably the first step. And then saying, hey, a part of me is colonized. The second step would be to say, preferably with a therapist or a coach, a part of me has been, a part of me has been colonized that I may never recover now. And in a certain sense, I have to be born again. I have to actually recreate parts of myself. I have to individuate now from this narcissistically abusive relationship which cause me to fuse and merge with the narcissist, such as the nature of narcissistically abusive relationships, especially if you look at Sam Vaknin's dual mothership model. You will appreciate that you've been in a fusion merger with an abusive human being who was fusing and merging with you against your will, without your consent, as a mother. He or she fused with you as a mother so that they could eventually devalue and discard you, devalue and discard the mother, so that they could individuate. This is very deep work. You, following the abuse, now have to kind of be born again. You have to be recreated as a new individual. You now have to individuate as much from that narcissistically abusive relationship as you had to individuate from your own mother, your own family, your own tribal consciousness in order to grow up. But what if you didn't do that? What if you didn't already individuate from your mother, from your family, from your own tribal consciousness in order to grow up? Well, now you're going to have to. Now, any work that you've avoided, it's not, I'm not blaming you. you. Nobody in this culture is actively encouraged to do it. There's no process for doing it. We don't talk about doing it. Some people sort of do it, most don't. You will now have to do that. So there's nothing less than full broad-scale individuation 
required now to recover from narcissistic abuse. You've been re-infantilized. So you now need to individuate and become an adult. But what if we don't assume, or I don't assume when I'm working with a client, oh, my client was a fully functioning individuated adult. Then the naughty narcissist vampire flew down from the, the church uh, uh, belfry with the cape flying and the fangs out went, rawr, got hold of you and re-infantilized you and you lost all of that progress. I don't assume that. I assume like me and everybody I know and all the rest of us, you were just doing the best you could. You were, you know, uh, chugging along in your life. Parts of you were individuated, parts of you not. Parts of you were still trapped in child's, childhood trauma. Parts of you were free of it. You'd done some therapy, you'd done some healing, but you know, you were not a fully individuated human being. But in the grips of the narcissistic, the abusive relationship, you were simultaneously infantilized, turned into a child, and simultaneously parentified, given a role that was not appropriate for you, given tasks to do that were not right for you, that hurt you, offered responsibilities for another human being who shouldn't have forced those responsibilities onto you. It's a very confusing experience. But the question is, how do we heal? How do we move on? We must individuate. We must become adults. We must grow up. So the work that we didn't do before the relationship, now everything needs to be done. And we don't assume a timeline where here I was in my life, then there was a narcissistic abusive relationship. How do I get back to where I was? You don't, you don't, there's no chance. I don't believe there's any chance that you'll ever get back to where you were. And I don't think you should try. I think you should seek to exceed where you were and to move past that, to transcend where you were and to become more of your authentic self, which is what individuation means in some senses and in other senses, it is to make the parts of you that are unconscious, conscious. And in other senses, put more simply, it means to grow up, to become an adult, to become emotionally mature, to take responsibility for your own life completely and to move on. Nothing less will work. Every other type of work or, or therapeutic modality that you use will be cosmetic. It may make you feel temporarily better. It may make you feel temporarily empowered, but ultimately you'll always go back until you have destroyed the shared fantasy between you and the narcissistic abuser. You will always seek to go back because your mind is colonized by them. So what to do? You must let that part of yourself go. You've already done this in your life. Parts of you have already died off and fallen off, and then you've grown and become a stronger person. So do it again, but do it consciously. Let parts of you that were immature, that were vulnerable, that were rooted in trauma, that were not even you, that were offered you by other people or forced upon you by other people, that were these cracks, that there were these chinks in the, uh, in the armor, in the boundary wall that allowed the narcissistic abuser to get in, let it go, let it die. Be born again, individuate. Don't seek to get back to where you were before the relationship. Seek to transcend it. Seek to be a fully formed, individuated adult. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And I look forward to speaking to you again in the next video. Hello folks, just to let you know, we now have a new course out. It's finally finished. It's called Unplug from the Matrix of Narcissistic Abuse and it's available from richardgrannon.com. Just hit this link right here and you can go get it.